What's up and hello out there, and welcome to ASCRS 2023 in sunny San Diego, California. There's nothing hotter in glaucoma treatment than MIGS, and surgeons need every tool at their disposal to make sure that these procedures have high-level patient outcome. Oculus believes their all-new Gonio Ready is a revolution in gonioscopy lenses, allowing surgeons to operate using both hands during MIGS procedures, adding new dimensions of flexibility, safety, and efficacy to the procedure. I'm joined here today by Dr. Ike Ahmed, a trailblazer in MIGS and glaucoma, and one of the world's premier ophthalmic surgeons to go deeper into the device and his experiences with it. Let's check it out. So welcome to the show. What's up, buddy? Hi, how's it going? Yeah. Good thanks, to catch up, Matt. Thanks for coming out. I know you're involved in the Gonio Ready development process. What do you think is missing or was missing before Gonio Ready? You know, it's been incredible to see the evolution of MIGS. I think the area that we probably haven't done as much on is visualization, because we need a good view to do what we do in the angle. I mean, as cataract surgeons, we know that having both hands in the eye have advantages, controlling the eye and doing additional maneuvers. And yet we're relegated to having only one eye controlling the instrument during most of our MIGS procedures. So those are some of the challenges we have with our current visualization technologies, and that's kind of where collaborating with Oculus to try to develop you know, a more integrated system, the microscope, was what has led to Gonio Ready. You know, in, in the early development process with Oculus, what are some of the things that you really just knew that you had to have? Well, I think it was important that if we have something attached to the microscope, it has to be quite versatile. It has to be willing to have a degree of tolerance for all eyes, you know, depending on the angulation, if there's any movement, any kind of torsion, that that lens is going to stay on the eye because I can't be holding the lens if, of course, it's on the microscope. So I think that was, that was most important. And, and over the last, you know, more than a year plus, We've evolved in terms of how to actually make that articulation on the actual gonial lens to keep it quite you know, mobile and versatile and stays on the eye. I think that was important. You know, having a, a user-friendly experience, you know, and shorten the learning curve to using it was important. So, you know, the attachment to the microscope, the angulations, the control was important as well. And also what's very important is to make sure we have access to the eye. Because, you know, the lens can be on the eye, but we need to make sure we can use the main incision, we can use side ports as well to get into the anterior chamber. So ensuring that we had enough space to work with, well, those are some of the important principles with the specific design. So I definitely want to get into the two hands thing because this is you know, what Oculus is kind of distinguishes this device from the others. So what are the kinds of things that having both hands specifically can help you with? You know, we know having you know, two hands available helps us in many ways. I think some of us are going to use both hands on an instrument to steady our hand. In mixed procedures, we often have to go forehand, backhand, non-dominant hand, and having a second hand to be able to you know, hold things together can help. So I think just having that free hand can help. Second thing can be controlling the eye. You know, not every patient is you know, in the right position. We've got to ask the patient to look left, look right. They don't look properly, they move around. It's un understandably difficult. So having a second hand to be able to control the eye, whether it's with a forcep, whether it's you know, through the side port incision with a cannula, or other instrumentation helps control the eye. And thirdly, having an ability to have a second hand into the eye, like we do, for example, with FACO. I've got a chopper in my left hand, a FACO in my right hand. Having a viscoelastic cannula or having something else to, do, to work together, a forcep to work together, you know, opens up the opportunity to do more in the angle. So yeah, I mean, you talked about doing more. I want to go into that flexibility kind of thing. So how does the Gonio Ready improve the flexibility? I mean, what kinds of things do you see yourself being able to do in the future with this device? So I mean, immediately, for example, we have challenges when we're doing procedures where we have bleeding, for example, or we have loss of the antechamber volume because of the maneuvers, which can be linked to more bleeding and more reflux. So the ability to have a cannula in the eye, you know, you're doing a procedure, you can inject more viscoelastic, you can maneuver the eye, control the eye as you're doing it. You know, it can be very helpful to have that second hand in there. That's the most immediate thing. Going forward, I'm excited to think about what we can do with both hands working together. For example, doing some sort of dissection in trabecular meshwork or doing some manipulation of a stent that's placed needs to, be, needs to be adjusted or something. Very much like we do already, for example, for anterior manu maneuvers, suturing both suturing into the, into the anterior chamber, doing different things like that. So, I mean, I think we haven't even thought about what we can do with it yet fully, and we fully, haven't fully baked it. But it just gives us so much more opportunities to do something with both our hands. One of the big feedback points that Oculus gets about the Gonio Ready is the size of the lens. Can you talk a little bit about how the size of the lens is different and how that helps? Well, as I said earlier, I think it's important you have a wide view, and we do. It's important that the view can be maintained with any kind of movement of the eye, and it does. We can adjust the position of the lens and move it you know, a few degrees left and right to get that view in the supranasal, infranasal quadrant. I think that all helps. But importantly, ensuring that we have access to the cornea through our limbal incisions to provide, you know, that entrance into the anterior chamber is important as well. So all these things are very important. You know, we have a lot of experience with mixed procedures, but it's challenging sometimes at the learning curve, and even those that have had experience, to maintain that view. It's easy to be pushing down with your hand, 
you know, your mind's thinking about what's happening with your, with your injector or with your intimate, and you're pushing down the view because it's difficult to stream. This allows us to maintain that view because you've got the scope suspending that lens on the cornea and you don't have the variable of your other hand pushing down or lifting up and losing that view. That maintenance of view, I think, is something that we underestimate that has the value of having like a hands-free device like, like this. Yeah. I mean, I want to go back to the arm also because, you know, the Gonio Ready is also good for patient safety. It improves efficacy, of course, but also the safety of the procedure. So, how, you know, what's your experience with that? How does that work? Well, I think, you know, because it's got a lot of flexibility and, you know, I call it the snake arm of yes. you know, attaching the lens, it has a lot of maneuverability. If there's any movement or patient, uh, you know, adjustment or anything, it kind of, it moves with the patient, you know, and it allows it to kind of conform to the globe easily. You know, we've not seen any safety problems if the patient were to lift up or something, you know, there's a there's compressibility to the tubing as well. So, you know, we've found this to be a very safe procedure without any complications uh, on the surface of the eye. So if I'm a patient and I'm getting surgery with the gonio ready versus without the gonio ready, what kinds of things can I expect? I, you know, I think that from a patient perspective, there's probably not a lot of difference because, you know, the, the comfort level is, is the same, which is comfortable. I will say that I think the adjusting of the patient may be less because we can control the eye with our hands. So there's probably less, yeah. okay, uh, Matt, look a bit to the left, look a bit to the right, oh, look up, look down, no, not that, that's a bit too much, look over there, you know, that happens a lot. So I think that kind of, you know, the back and forth can be perhaps reduced a bit because we have control of the eye, you know. So you mentioned the learning curve, you know, if I'm a surgeon, you know, what are you as a Gonio Ready user saying to a surgeon who's a little bit intimidated by that learning curve? Yeah, I think that is certainly something to be remarked about because we're all creatures of habit and we're just used, even though it may not be the best way to do it, we're used to doing one way, yeah. you know. We're just having our, eye, our hand on the patient, on the lens. If there's any movement, that we move the lens around to do that. You know, this is different though. So we're, in this case, we're not moving the lens so much. We're actually controlling the eye to keep where the lens is. So that kind of mental switch up is something that we need to kind of understand. You know, and then we need to kind of be optimized so that we don't we don't want to have surgeons putting the gonio ready on the eye. We're not in the right position. We're searching for where to go. So we've kind of developed ways to we say, listen, you know, have it in the retracted position, um, focus on the eye. Uh, you know, you can tilt the patient's head before putting the gonio uh, solution on the eye, any, any viscoelastic. Focus on the nasal iris, so you're far enough down. Put the viscoelastic on and then, and then swing the gonio ready on the eye and then make some micro adjustments with the, with the rotational knob. You can move up and down with your scope lift if you have to and then you got your view, you're good to go. And once you have that view, you're, you're basically now ready to proceed with the procedure. Perfect. Well, Ike, thanks so much for joining us today. Really right, appreciate buddy. it. And uh, see you again soon. Big thanks to Dr. Ike Ahmed for joining us. And it certainly sounds like we're on the doorstep of a new era in glaucoma and MIG surgery. So if you're interested in learning more about the Goni already, head on over to Oculus's website to check it out.